Some seek a greater understanding of nature. Some seek a major scientific breakthrough. But I seek something else. Are we having fun yet? I seek to find Joe's truck from the blockbuster movie Twister. One man, Tim Stegner of Tim's Body Works in Guthrie, Oklahoma, holds the keys to the mystery. Literally, he has the keys because he owns the 1984 Jeep J10 pickup driven by Helen Hunt in Twister. They definitely recognize it if they're big Twister fans. Who uh, isn't a Twister fan, really? <laughs> if you're not a Twister fan, reevaluate your life. Released in 1996, Twister is a filmed in Oklahoma blockbuster that has become more than a cult classic. And this Jeep is one of the stars. I'd had it for years before I figured out that there was a lot of people interested in it. For Tim, the Jeep brought back memories of the filming in Guthrie, but its true magnetism first popped up on his radar when he drove the vehicle to the National Weather Center in Norman. Well, we got to the Weather Center, and by the time we come out, there's about 15 or 20 weather students. They were just gathered around this thing, all discussing, oh, I think it's a real truck. No, it can't be, you know? So in, in that moment, kind of realizing how special, you know, the movie is and how important, you know, even the truck is to people. But having a degree in meteorology is not needed for funnel fandom. A couple from Chicago, their entire vacation was just to go to places where scenes have been shot from the movie Twister and came down and spent, you know, several hours with the truck, taking pictures with it. On a weekend, we'll be in here and I'll see people kind of looking around. I was like, is this where the Twister truck is? I'm like, as a matter of fact. How much work did you have to do on this truck to get it up to speed? So we did have to put another motor and transmission in it to kind of get it running. Uh, it still it still needs a better motor and transmission in it. All the other pieces, I just had to put back on it. Luckily, the, the person I got it from, when he got it back from being stolen, he took everything off that could be unbolted and took it home. That's right. This Jeep not only survived tornadoes, but grand theft. A friend of mine actually called me and said, hey, there's a, a truck that has been stolen and recovered and a guy wants someone just to save it and told me what it was so i went and looked at it and turned out to be the real movie truck and he would sell it to you only if you kept it only if we kept it together yeah absolutely he trusted you enough with this prized possession of movie stardom <laughs> right right yeah tim is in the business of trust as one of the leaders in insuring collectibles haggerty trusts him to put classics back on the road well we do restoration work and we're a Haggerty shop so uh, we get a lot of jobs like this that are just minor collisions and things of that nature that are restoration projects but the whole car doesn't need to be restored. Is there really anything called minor damage when you have a car like this <laughs> though? I mean... Oh yeah, I mean it, it's definitely uh, always more major on a vehicle like this than it would be on something that you normally drive around as your daily. What I really love is we also do restorations. Uh, on classic cars, so that's really my my passion is with the classic cars. That passion is obvious in the work of Tim and his team. Passion in the form of perfection can be seen in this SEMA bound 67 Chevy Nova. This is not what a 67 Nova looked like when it came out of the uh, Chevy plant. No, it's definitely had a lot of, lot of mods done. What's under the hood? Well, it's a LS7, but it's uh, about 550 horsepower to the to the tires. If anybody's uh, familiar with these cars, they'll definitely notice all the subtle changes we've done, the body mods and deletes. Sometimes that passion is personal, like this 1935 Seagraves fire truck. Oh, so my dad was a retired uh, Oklahoma City fireman. He was 35 years with Oklahoma City, and uh, it was also a Shriner, and wound up finding this old Shrine parade truck which happens to be an old retired Oklahoma City fire truck. And he bought it and just took it to parades. That's pretty much all he ever did with it. So now that's, that's what we've been doing with it. He kept it running. Yeah, yeah. So is that where your love of cars came from? Yeah, probably, it uh, definitely started there and then it kind of took it to the next level. Yeah. So. <laughs> next level is what is next for the Twister truck. We're fixing to take this thing back, all the way back apart. Uh, Redo all of it as close to screen accurate as we can possibly do. But Joe's truck drives now, so it's time we drive. Listen to that. Yeah. The J10 started up right away and drove like I hoped it would, like it survived love triangles and storm warnings. 
So when you get in this vehicle, do you check the weather report first, just to be <laughs> sure? It's probably a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> check yep. the forecast today, it said, chance of rain with possible movie magic. Not exactly storm chasing, more like bucket listing. Give me the heading. I don't know any of the good lines for the movie, <laughs> but uh, we have a cow. We have a cow. God, I love that movie. Same cow. It's the same cow. <laughs> for those that have not watched the movie, and my question would be, why not? Why haven't you watched this movie? It's the Citizen Kane of disaster movies. You should watch it. It should, it should be required to watch it. Oh, I think so. What happens to this vehicle in the movie? Well, it doesn't fare well. No, it, it gets pulled up in the tornado and dropped on its stop. Where's my truck? There it is. Could you drive this into a bridge right now? Just for a fact. You could, yes. Could you? Right. No. Okay. No. I could. No. That's where the movie magic stops. Right. Like, doing absolutely. anything to the car. Yeah. Thank you. Made my trip. Oh, this has been fun. The Twister truck is in good hands. So we'll just have to make our own movie magic.